Thanks for uh, joining us this evening. We are recording this session, so you can have it available at a later time. Uh, this is a webinar portion, so your video and chat feature are uh, not turned on. Uh, if you have questions, please just drop it in the Q&A uh, at the bottom of your screen or top on the uh, Zoom uh, menu bar. And then a couple of people did submit questions in advance at the time of registration. So we'll do our best to go through those uh, during the presentation tonight as well. Give it a couple more minutes for people to, uh, to tune in and we'll uh, get started uh, right at 7.03. Okay, good evening, everybody. It is uh, 7.03, so we're gonna go ahead and get started for uh, tonight's presentation. Um, as we go through, if you have questions, please just select the Q&A button uh, in your Zoom menu navigation, uh, type in your question, and we'll get to them throughout the evening, uh, as well as the, e the questions that were submitted uh, during the time of registration. So thanks for joining us for the membership and marketing webinar for Troops and Crews. Uh, we're going to focus this evening a lot on some of the initiatives we're doing as a council, uh, some best practice resources that you can use uh, in your own unit, um, as well as discussing some of uh, the retention uh, pieces that we find uh, have been fruitful during COVID-19. So to guess, my name's Tyler Yankee. I am the field director for Daniel Webster Council, and we have uh, Derek Wirtz, the Daniel Webster Council Chief Operating Officer as well, will be your two presenters tonight. Uh, and thank you for joining us. Tonight's presentation will be about 45 minutes long and we are recording it so you can have it available uh, for future use. Uh, and with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Derek to get us started. Great, thanks Tyler. And good evening everyone. Thanks again for joining us and, and uh, stopping by tonight to hear about some of the membership and marketing uh, efforts underway. Mm -hmm resources available for you. Uh, as we get into the presentation tonight, uh, we want to take a few minutes to, to talk about uh, what does the fall of 2020 look like? Uh, uh, we're, we're obviously in a new normal, which is going to continue for uh, some time. Uh, so so the, uh, the situation that we're, we're living in and, and uh, working in as, as uh, scout leaders uh, probably will not change any time in the, in the coming months. Um, so uh, we have to be flexible and uh, and work within the, the guidelines that we have for our uh, group programming and uh, those items. So uh, the, the name of the game through the, the fall is going to be uh, flexibility, uh, sharing ideas and working together. Uh, the, the programming that, that most likely is going to happen is, is hybrid programming. Um, 
We don't know for sure what all of the schools uh, throughout the state are going to be doing, uh, but many of them seem to be indicating that they're going to be doing some uh, some version of uh, blended program, uh, blend, blended learning, uh, such as uh, in-person and virtual uh, pieces. Um, so likewise in scouting, we're going to have to think about doing the same kinds of things. Uh, and when we can uh, do small in-person gatherings, uh, maintaining the, the uh, cohort sizes of 10, uh, no, no group larger than, than 50, so five cohorts, um, taking advantage of the virtual resources that are available, uh, such as the, uh, the Family Fun Fest and, uh, and uh, virtual camperees that are, that are going to be upcoming. Um, and then uh, some version of, of mixing the two together. If there's a, a way to, to give families who uh, are not comfortable with in-person uh, activities or, or, or cannot do those, uh, make sure that there's some uh, virtual piece of that. Um, and also for the families that, that are uh, tired of virtual activities for their uh, son or daughter, have some in-person opportunities available. Um, we're going to uh, share with you tonight uh, some of the resources uh, that, that are available both locally and, and on a national level to, one, support uh, virtual programming um, and also uh, things that are available for retention. Um, unfortunately, as, as I'm here tonight, um, neither Tyler or I can share with you that we have a, a magic bullet that's going to, to make uh, everything work smoothly and, and uh, be the, the one size fits all for our, our, recor uh, our recruiting this fall. Um, but uh, what we are going to do is share with you the, the materials that we have and uh, the, the things that we uh, believe will be uh, best suited for you to use uh, with your troop or crew this fall. Uh, just some, some things to remember, uh, starting uh, this past Saturday, August 1st, the uh, national new national membership fee went into effect, um, meaning that youth uh, members now pay sixty six dollars uh, per year, which can be prorated uh, each month uh, if they join this fall. Uh, for new youth joining, there's a one time twenty five dollar joining fee, and uh, the adult registration fee is now forty two dollars. Uh, you uh, will encourage your units to be using the uh, online applications. Uh, which you can set up uh, in my.scouting. And a little bit later on, we're going to show you where some of those support resources live. Uh, it, if you're using the online applications, uh, those payments will be limited to debit and credit cards. Uh, in the past, you may be familiar that a that, uh, family was able to select that they would bring cash or check uh, as payment to you uh, during an in-person activity. Uh, that will not be available this fall. Um, you'll remember that earlier in the uh, in the summer, we announced that the uh, DWC insurance fee would be remaining uh, the same for uh, 2021 uh, as it was uh, for 2020, so no increase there. Uh, and any online registrations will include uh, the the fees uh, for DWC insurance. Uh, so we're going to move into the section of our webinar uh, about uh, the marketing resources and uh, and tools available to grow uh, your unit as well as retain youth that are there. And I'm going to uh, hand it back over to Tyler to walk us through some of those items. Great, Derek. Uh, before we begin into uh, what's available for you to use, uh, just a quick reminder uh, for any youth that transfer from Cub Scouts into Scouts BSA Troop, uh, or any member that transfers units troop to troop or troop to crew, uh, there is no transfer fee that's charged by the Boy Scouts America. So all you have to do is just fill out a new youth application uh, to transfer into the new unit. Uh, currently, you cannot transfer using the online registration system in my.scouting. That is something that they're continuing to look at and evaluate. Uh, but right now, uh, it is not in the immediate project plan uh, to have that functionality available, uh, but there are some new online registration resources available, including 
uh, allowing you as a unit to delegate uh, other members in your unit outside of your key three to assist you in the online registration process, as well as a key three COR delegate. Uh, the important part to note is that the COR still has to approve any adult online applications that can't be uh, a delegated position. Uh, so uh, online adult applications are available in the new uh, updates in the online registration system as well. And then the delegate for your uh, registration and membership process in my.scouting also allows them to have access to update your bscout.org pin information, which is available uh, right in my.scouting. So uh, as we go through and as you have questions, please just use the Q&A section. Uh, we'll go through those uh, at the conclusion. Any questions you come in uh, at the end of this section. And we do have some questions that came in in advance of tonight's webinar that we'll get to as well uh, at the conclusion of this section for those that we uh, don't answer in tonight's presentation. Uh, so we have uh, on the council website, a membership and marketing hub, and I'll give you a little peek of that currently here in one second. So this is when you go to nhscouting.org. We have a designated portal for uh, membership and marketing resources. This portal is actually going to be updated, one with a copy of uh, tonight's webinar video and slide deck, uh, as well as last night's Cub Scout video, uh, plus new resources that have been released in the last two weeks. This whole page is gonna get revamped uh, tomorrow afternoon. So stay tuned tomorrow evening for an update. Um, it's very easy to access when you go to nhscouting.org. Uh, two quick ways to do it. One is you can scroll on the home page to our quick links uh, at the bottom of our scouting at home uh, graphic, or you can come up to the uh, council website nav bar and select more and it'll be listed right there in alphabetical order. So very easy to find. And what you'll find here on the membership and marketing hub are some best practice resources, as well as tools that we can work with you uh, in your unit to raise awareness of your programs. And one key way of that is through our uh, Share Your Score Story portal, uh, where we can capture your information by filling out a very simple form uh, with details about the event uh, or what type of service project or activity that you participated in. And then our team will help you write press releases to get the word out about scouting and all the great things that you're doing in your local community. On here too, in the same section, as well as in the bottom of this page, are downloadable uh, press release templates that you could fill in your own information and make those available uh, into your local markets uh, to get the word out about scouting as well. And we truly believe we're our own best kept secret. So as much as we can get out to show that scouting is still strong here in the Granite State, uh, we do believe it'll lead to an increase in families interested in participating uh, in your programs. You also find on here quick links to things like the Big Brand Center, which we'll show uh, here in a moment as well, in addition to some of our growth resources. If you were to click on the growth resources page, what you'll find here is going to be uh, what our 2020 council growth plan was uh, prior to the COVID pandemic. While there are some portions of this growth plan that are getting adjusted based on uh, both virtual and in-person recruitment, there are a lot of really good best practices and backdating schedules of things and strategies that your unit could take part in uh, throughout the fall to raise awareness and encourage families to join uh, your programs. In addition, we have a peer-to-peer -peer recruitment guide, which is very popular for troops. Uh, and it's not just the one mechanism of recruiting kids into troops. While it's an easy one to get uh, a local scout to invite a friend to come out and experience and do an activity together, uh, it is not the only way to recruit. And we'll go through some of those strategies uh, here shortly as well. And then in addition to that, what you'll find uh, in the marketing hub are some other best practices, how to put your unit on the map with Google. This walks you through a step-by-step -step guide of creating a, a small Google business uh, information hub. Uh, it's a free feature in Google. And what it'll do using those step-by-step -step guide is it creates a, a listing for you that ties in 
uh, with your chartered organization information or photos that you fill out about your uh, troop or crew uh, or a Cub Scout pack if you're associated with that as well um, on how to get your unit right on top on the map in Google. Uh, and in a Google search result, it'll help you uh, increase your position in Google as well as give little teasers about your event on the right hand side in a Google map type environment. So a great opportunity, one extra step to get involved uh, with Google. And then we also have refer friend uh, promotions, $25 gift card that we do every month. Uh, you just fill out this form. And then some additional best practices. As I mentioned, we'll update a few more and I'll show you some of those uh, new features that are coming out uh, later tomorrow. Uh, but step-by-step -step guide on how to do a beascout.org pin as well as an online registration guide and some additional program materials that are available uh, for your use, working through your district executive and district membership volunteer growth teams uh, to coordinate all of your efforts for your recruitment and retention process with your units. Um, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of the great one-stop resources, we will be updating this uh, tomorrow to include a video of this, plus some new materials that we just made available today. Uh, and I'll show you those shortly. Um, but I wanna walk you through some of the initiatives that we're doing as a council, and then show you two other pieces that can really benefit your programs to get uh, engaged. One, on your marketing, as well as uh, just engagement with other scouts uh, and troops in your area uh, to learn best practices. So one, um, over the last three years, we've worked with the National Council to offer geofencing program uh, for recruitment events in the fall. This year, we had the benefit of uh, continuing that program and it's a much narrow participation, uh, only 55 councils, there's about 260 in the United States. Uh, so about 55 of us are able to participate uh, in this fully funded program, no cost to us, or to you as a unit, um, and it's through Facebook geofencing. And what that does is, is we capture uh, information that you have for an open house, whether it's virtual or an in-person recruitment event. Uh, you provide us that information. We have a form that you'll fill out uh, that your district executive will provide to you uh, later this week. And in that form, it'll ask you information such as, is it a virtual or is it an in-person meeting open house that you would like to offer? And then depending on what scenario it is, it'll ask you, you know, what's the meeting URL for a virtual event, or if you're having an in-person event, where's the actual location going to be, date, time, et cetera. We capture that data, and then we work with the National Council's marketing team to create Facebook events uh, that are boosted and listed as promotions uh, throughout Facebook, and it's geofenced or geotagged based on a three mile radius around the physical location that you're gonna have that event. And what geofencing does is once you get within that three mile radius or you have similarities to that event venue, say it's a school, and then every time you're in that geographical radius, uh, you'll start seeing more information about the upcoming events uh, for uh, recruitment. Uh, so if you geofence a middle school, and you're there dropping off, or scouts are there, or prospective scouts are there, uh, attending school, or going to activities, uh, they'll start, based on their geolocation, start receiving more information about uh, your upcoming event. So it's a great way to, and really targeted approach uh, through targeted uh, persona profiles, you know, an age group, families that are interested in this type of activity, to really get the word out about your upcoming open houses and events. So that's free for you and we'll geofence up to six locations. Uh, so it's a very exciting opportunity for us to be a part of and you'll get information on how to submit your information and dates uh, through your district executive later this week. In addition to that, we're uh, launching a Google AdWords campaign through the Google for Nonprofits program. This allows us to uh, create Google search result ads based on keywords, so whenever somebody types in, for example, uh, scouting in Manchester, New Hampshire, we're able to create a generated uh, ad space inside Google that shows up at the top of Google search results. 
But the important part is, is they don't necessarily have to search for scouting. So we can create uh, AdWords based on key uh, words that we use in scouting, whether it's outdoor activities, a variety of other things uh, to generate ad placements inside Google search results uh, to draw their attention into learning more and potentially signing up uh, to join scouting. National Council is doing a digital advertising campaign. Um, we did just share some of that information on Facebook uh, earlier this afternoon. Some of their ads have started to launch. Uh, the first one I saw today was a Scouts BSA ad. Uh, that was pretty exciting to see. Uh, so that stuff is coming out as well, plus their own Google ad campaign in addition to what we're doing. I talked a little bit about the press release templates. It's a great mechanism to get the word out about scouting. And we're happy to help you uh, submit any of those uh, press releases on your behalf. Uh, it's just uh, a two-way communication flow, as much information as you can share with us about all the great things that you're doing, as much as we can promote it for you. And then um, on scoutingwire.org in the marketing and membership hub, these are a lot of national resources that'll talk some uh, recruitment strategies in a very broad sense, as well as some upcoming and pre uh, past recorded uh, webinars on a lot of the topics that I've been talking about tonight, right? What is geofencing, uh, information about utilizing Scoutbook to its full potential and more. Uh, but another really exciting part that's free to use, available anytime, is the BSA Brand Center. And I'll take a moment to show you that now because new features have just been added. So in the BSA Brand Center, um, I usually get to it just by typing in BSA Brand Center on Google, uh, but there are some quick links, one on our own council website, as well as two um, on the scoutingwire.org website. Some new features that were just added for your unit to use uh, in the BSA Brand Center just came out this week. Uh, very excited about them. This is your one-stop shop for all resources that relate to uh, scouting promotions, approved logos, uh, brand guidelines, a variety of resources are here for you. Uh, two quick things that I wanna show you is one, this new fall 2020 recruitment assets. If you were to click on this, um, what it'll populate are some pre-recorded Scout Talk videos. This is exciting in two parts. One, it's never been done before, so it's a great resource to have now. Uh, but two, uh, it also captures a full demographic of what scouting looks like today, both male, female, diversity, as well as parent talks, where you'll get these uh, adults that are talking and relaying a lot of information about what scouting has to offer for a family. And the kid videos talk more peer to peer about what scouting has to offer. We really encourage units to use these and work with their uh, schools and other institutions uh, as a mechanism to deliver virtual recruitment opportunities and information about scouts that can be engaging, not only to have on your own uh, unit social media, but also on your unit websites as well. So that's a great resource new, available, uh, brand new this year, uh, very exciting to have. And then the second is uh, available for you anytime are downloadables uh, for Scouts BSA promotions. And there is information there for crews and Sea Scouts as well. As you can see here, they're very easily divided up based on category. And we as a council will help you uh, customize any of the materials as well as make them available for you to, for you free of charge. We do have flyers pre-printed. We have several yard signs that are available for you to use, uh, plus a whole wealth of other resources. If you don't find it here, uh, we'd be happy to help you uh, design those. So for a good example is having an ad or an insert into a religious institution's uh, bulletin or announcements. That may not be something that is easily downloadable here on the BSA Brand Center based on just the sizing. Uh, or it may not have all the information that you're looking for. Those types of things, we'll be happy to help customize those uh, for you. A lot of great videos, uh, desktop wallpapers, phone wallpapers, a lot of good stuff here on the BSA Brand Center. So we're excited for the new updates that have been listed there. Last thing I wanna show you is uh, 
about a month ago, we created an online forum, a Facebook group uh, called the Daniel Webster Council Forum. Uh, you can search for it in Facebook, or you can go to the Daniel Webster Council Facebook page and under groups, uh, select the forum. We looked at another mechanism. How can we deliver information to you in real time uh, in a environment that most of our families are using uh, every day uh, without really overwhelming inboxes, email inboxes for uh, very specific info that is updated or changed on a daily basis, for example. Uh, so we wanted to create an environment that units could come together, ask questions, uh, propose ideas, uh, collaborate together in kind of an, a forum community. Uh, and we know most of our adults, uh, parents and leaders uh, spend a lot of their social media time uh, on Facebook as their number one uh, resource. So as you can see here, this is the, one of the new BSA, uh, Scouts BSA Facebook ads. This will populate on all major social media platforms. Uh, so this is live that showed up in my feed uh, as an ad earlier today, partly because I enjoy outdoor activities uh, and I have some affiliation with Scouts. So it's a great way uh, for uh, targeted recruitment. And then we add other great resources, you know, recruitment ideas. Uh, this idea book will be listed on our membership and marketing hub tomorrow. And then as you can see, we do have volunteers uh, in here interacting and sharing resources. So another great uh, spot to capture information, have them available. We tag all of our posts uh, based on topics. So if you only wanted to see recruitment information, for example, you just could select that topic and it'll show you all uh, current posts that are tagged with that. Um, that topic, that uh, subject topic. So uh, pretty excited about that. If you're not a member yet, please join. Uh, it's available for everybody. Uh, just follow the Scout Oath and Law, um, and it's a great resource to communicate with one another. As I mentioned, as you have questions, as we go through, please uh, feel free to use the Q&A section. Um, I will answer some of the questions that we had coming in. Uh, one was, uh, for example, having uh, images uh, available for uh, showcasing what scouting has to offer. Uh, that's co-ed, for example, boys or girls, or if in Cub Scouts, uh, family pack images. Uh, the BSA Brand Center is your number one spot to be able to download those images They're ready and available for you to use at any time. Oh, I clicked on the BSA Brand Center. Hold on one second for me. There we go. Um, so in addition to our uh, marketing efforts, we also wanna make sure that we're supporting unit uh, recruitment and retention efforts, um, not just virtually, but also in person. Uh, and for, as we've done in years past, and we will continue to do, uh, make available for free, a lot of great resources, like flyers, yard signs that I mentioned before, but also a team uh, with a wealth of experience, uh, many years in the profession, uh, to be there as a resource for you uh, to ask and answer questions on best practices, um, specific things that may be um, related just to your own community that may not have the same um, reach as other communities do. And we'll be there to help guide uh, and provide advice on how to use those resources your best number one spot to go is with your district executive or your volunteer membership team. Derek and I are here uh, anytime as well to answer questions and I'll make sure Derek puts our contact information uh, in the chat if it's not there already. Uh, so feel free to reach out. Unlike last previous years where we've been able to roll out a, a full membership growth plan that's pretty universal across the state uh, this year, um, as we know, it's very tailored based on community and even in each community, what schools are uh, allowing and having access to do. So uh, we do know it's a very interesting time, but we're dedicated to provide as much support and resources that you need uh, to feel successful. And one, recruiting new kids, and two, uh, engaging your current scouts uh, for retention. And that's the biggest piece this fall, is to ensure that we have a foundation to retain the scouts that we have today. Uh, to continue on into 2021 
uh, one, to experience summer camp 2021, but also just to uh, keep them excited and engaged in uh, what scouting has to offer today. We've done a few of those during COVID-19 and the rise of the pandemic earlier this spring with the expansion of our online merit badge workshops, um, as well as offering NOVA awards um, and additional items like, for example, our Granite Base Camp at Home program that we'll continue to expand on moving into the fall on how can we utilize our current properties, the programs that we offer uh, to offer small group cohort size uh, activities. And what we found for the units that are most engaged in scouting and delivering in-person unit events, uh, for example, we allow in the council up to size of 50 uh, participating in a unit activity, so cohort sizes um, of 10 up to a full-size group uh, of 50, uh, and that's available. And we found units that are participating are doing uh, supplemental programming and just reconnecting for fun, kind of like trivia-based activities uh, in a virtual environment. And then when they've been able to meet together using the patrol style uh, to get small groups together to work on advancement, scout skills, uh, and those types of activities, either in a park, somebody's backyard, a lot of great innovation on engaging uh, youth into that small group environment. And we believe that retention uh, is directly tied into quality of program and an engaging program. So as much as you can offer in that small group patrol style environment, which is at the, the core of what scouting is all about, uh, we believe it will allow for a more engaging and interactive experience going into the fall. And we're also gonna work on a, a direct mail campaign uh, that troops will be able to benefit with. Uh, and I'll turn over to Derek to uh, share some information about that and what else is upcoming with our Granite Base Camp programs. Great, thanks Tyler. Uh, a lot of exciting uh, information there and, and uh, great resources available uh, for everyone to use. So thanks for uh, sharing all of that and, and showing us where to find those things and, and how to use them. Uh, as Tyler mentioned, uh, we we have uh, uh, prepared to spend uh, a significant uh, investment in doing some direct mail uh, to um, targeted communities for families uh, with children in the, the household from the ages of five to 13. Um, inviting them to uh, one learn about scouting uh, part of the the direct mail will be uh, an informational piece uh, talking about scouting and uh, the great values and and programs that we offer as well as uh, highlighting uh, really how safe scouting is and what we do to to uh, keep you safe um, and then uh, another part of the uh, the direct mail program will be a call to action uh, asking those same families that have learned a little bit about scouting uh, to consider coming out to uh, a joint scouting event or uh, taking part in, in a virtual event if, um, if that's the, the matter that we'll be recruiting. Um, so we're, uh, we've secured a, um, a vendor that we're working with. Uh, those pieces are, are in uh, uh, creation uh, development right now uh, and we'll be going out uh, later this month to uh, targeted zip codes throughout the state. Uh, so some of your families um, may be seeing those as well as uh, new families will, will be seeing uh, information about scouting uh, coming in their mail this fall. Uh, expanding the use of our camp properties and, and uh, continuing to, to uh, use Granite Base Camp uh, and our mobile base camp as, as uh, ways to uh, promote scouting, give people the opportunity to uh, engage in the great programs that we have to offer, uh, whether they're scouts or non-scouts. Um, last year, you may remember that uh, starting in, in uh, September, we uh, took our mobile base camp out to uh, uh, 15 or 20 uh, locations throughout the state. Uh, this picture on your screen happens to be at the, the Glendy Festival, which happens in Manchester. Uh, unfortunately, that won't be able to happen uh, this fall. Um, but the, the picture helps you to understand what uh, mobile base camp is. Uh, in the back left is, is the actual uh, mobile trailer, which is a rolling billboard for scouting throughout uh, as it's traveling uh, 
hundreds of miles throughout the state. Um, next to that in the back, the large red inflatable structure is uh, a two lane Daisy BB range. Uh, just past that uh, on the far right side, you can see it slightly as a green uh, backstop for an inflatable archery. Um, and in the foreground, uh, there's a yellow circle, which is a uh, spike ball. And the, uh, the orange cage to the left is a gaga pit. Um, we don't know that we'll be able to offer a uh, gaga or spike ball this year, just because of uh, being able to property, properly sanitize the equipment. Um, however, we, uh, we do believe that uh, for small group settings, we'll be able to offer um, archery BB and potentially some STEM activities uh, that we can bring out to uh, small group activities for your, uh, your trooper crew um, that we could do potentially on a sun, uh, Saturday or Sunday morning uh, at a community park or school, par school parking lot so that uh, you can invite uh, small groups of, of uh, non-scouts out to get a taste of things that they may do in scouting. Um, in addition, we, we're going to expand uh, some of the, the program offerings uh, that we have at Camp Carpenter and Griswold Scout Reservation, uh, making uh, things available for families and uh, patrol or den style activities. Um, things like having uh, uh, QR codes on, uh, on cards throughout the, uh, the camp that will help with a guided hike or uh, a nature tour um, or different uh, other activities that will be um, helpful to, to families to get outside and do some, some programming, as well as um, count for scouts to check off some uh, cub adventures or uh, rank advancement requirements for Scouts BSA. Uh, one thing that I can tell you is that uh, the resources that we, we have and uh, continue to create um, are going to be uh, evolving over, over time. So uh, as, as they change, uh, you saw the, the membership and marketing hub uh, earlier, that's going to be the one-stop shop for you to go and, and, uh, and keep tabs on, on the things that we are offering and putting up uh, on a regular basis. Um, feel free to, to reach out, and uh, if you're not seeing a resource that, that you need, um, uh, if we're able to, uh, to create that um, or provide that, uh, we certainly will. Um, so uh, please let your district executive know, or Tyler or I, uh, and we'll make every effort to, uh, to post up uh, resources that you think will uh, help your unit be more successful at uh, recruiting or retaining kids uh, over the, the remainder of 2020 and into early 2021. Um, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the program, um, flexibility and, uh, and being able to adapt uh, quickly or, or in real time to what's happening uh, uh, in our community as well as uh, uh, environmentally with the, the changes in the pandemic. Uh, is going to be key. Um, so uh, we ask you to, uh, you know, one, be flexible with us. We're going to definitely do everything possible to make sure that, that you have resources um, uh, and, and we're going to do what we can to support you. Um, but for, for you as units, making sure that you uh, engage with your, uh, your families, um, keep them informed as to what's going on, um, and, and ask the, your scouts and uh, families what it is that they're looking for. And uh, the best, to the best of your ability, try to provide that or ask them to become engaged in, in helping to provide uh, those things for uh, other families as well in the unit. Um, and as you might need resources to help um, uh, carry those things out, please let us know uh, because uh, there, there may be uh, troops or packs and other or crews and other uh, regions that are, that are doing things similarly and we can uh, be the conduit of sharing best practices. Um, one thing that I would say is uh, 
for our Scouts BSA troops especially, um, you may want to consider using the Den Chief program uh, as a way that you can partner with a local PAC. Uh, one, it'll help them out to uh, do unique programming. Um, and two, it's a way to keep your scouts uh, engaged in doing something fresh that uh, they may not be used to doing uh, as part of their scout uh, function. Um, so I know that uh, many of our PACs are going to be looking for help with uh, what kind of programming to do. And sometimes uh, a den chief can help make things exciting for Cub Scouts um, and offer a new perspective that, that an adult can't necessarily offer. Um, and for our Scouts BSA, it gives them a great leadership opportunity and a chance to, uh, to show some uh, excitement and leadership to uh, the younger Scouts uh, who will one day be in their shoes. Um, stay connected with your schools. Um, if you're not familiar with the Adopt a School program, um, it's it's a, certainly a program that that can be done with uh, Scout troops or uh, venturing crews. Uh, a lot of our Cub Scout packs take advantage of of that. Uh, it's basically a way to uh, adopt your uh, your school or uh, your SAU and. Uh, be a partner with uh, the educators. Uh, several of our, our uh, units uh, during the, the uh, initial parts of, of the COVID outbreak um, helped lead the opening uh, flag uh, ceremonies during the mornings of uh, virtual learning. Um, uh, so scouts in their uniform uh, led the, the pledge to the flag. Um, were the ones delivering morning announcements, uh, those kinds of things, uh, so that that uh, the the student, their fellow students, got to see that they were a part of scouting, and that uh, scouts are doing things to help out uh, throughout the school. Uh, uh, another thing is to become engaged with your PTO or PTA organization within the schools. Um, those uh, organizations oftentimes have the best direct connection uh, to communicating with parents. Uh, so if, uh, if there's a, a parent in your unit that has, that's either a member of the PTO or PTA or has connections uh, to those organizations, uh, that's a great resource to be able to use to help uh, as another way of getting uh, the word out. Many times those organizations will um, will help communicate things that are of benefit uh, to the school and to the students in the school. And if you're able to frame uh, the importance of scouting uh, to them, they will help you uh, get the word out. Um, ask for help. Uh, your, your district executive, uh, others on, on the DWC team are here to help. Um, we would love to be able to talk through uh, any of the ideas that you have, um, and and uh, you know we can share, as I said earlier, be the the conduit to share best practices um, when we learn from you what what is working, or if we're learning from you things that are challenges uh, to be able to help address those statewide um, uh, is is important. Um, as I said uh, before. Um, uh, unfortunately, Tyler and I uh, are not here tonight to be able to say uh, this is the the uh, be all and end all to to help uh, uh, for fall recruiting in a challenging environment this fall. Uh, but but I think if if you're able to deploy the resources that we've uh, shared um, and uh, and stay engaged with us and keep your families engaged, uh, we have we have every opportunity uh, to continue to be successful. Uh, I'll let uh, Tyler talk a little bit about uh, uh, some virtual programming and the resources that are available for that um, and uh, some engagement opportunities for your scouts. Great. Thanks, Derek. Um, you know, a lot of the first half of tonight's presentation really talked about uh, marketing resources and materials that are available uh, to promote your units that we certainly uh, want to work with you to uh, customize those for how you want them, uh, as well as having some of those print materials available for you. But um, probably one of the most important things in 2020 
Uh, I'd love to go back to 2019. Probably one of the most important things in 2020 uh, is the retention of our youth. Uh, we know that uh, retaining scouts today is probably more difficult than it's ever been, um, partly because of the virtual environment and just the uh, Zoom or virtual meeting burnout uh, that many of our families and our parents are experiencing. And even quite frankly, our adult volunteers. Um, you know, we use Zoom every day for work and uh, I had three Zoom meetings uh, earlier today um, and having an additional one in the evening can be tiresome. Uh, and we're mindful of that. And we do know that's probably the single largest challenge outside of uh, finding new places to meet because maybe your local school uh, won't have a meeting space available for you uh, for an evening meeting. Uh, we do know that's a challenge that you're facing as well, but retention of youth and volunteers uh, are crucial to our success as we go through the fall. And what we found so far during COVID-19, uh, one of the key elements of that success, especially at the youth level, has been participating in the small group uh, environments, whether it's at a park or in a backyard uh, or taking advantage of any of the camping guidelines that we uh, released in the recent weeks as well. You know, our sizing of our groups are limited to 50. Uh, we have 13 units in Daniel Webster Council with a uh, unit size of 43 or more. Uh, so we do know that the patrol style uh, programming and content delivery and advancement strategies are available for our units to use. Uh, and we have seen a lot of really exciting uh, activities and alternatives of delivering program uh, during the COVID-19 pandemic for those units that have been participating uh, in small groups in the recent weeks. Uh, so we're very excited, uh, optimistic about that uh, in a great function of getting in person just even for uh, a small activity or a hike. You know, a great example, uh, and I'll give a plug for it, is the 1,000 miles or bust uh, hiking challenge on August 29th and 30th. A great uh, situation, one, to raise money for your local unit, 75% return uh, of money that you raise back to your unit to fund your scouting program uh, for the 2020-2021 program year, uh, but also a, a very exciting way to get uh, families outdoors and uh, connect with one another and, and hit the trails here in New Hampshire for a great cause. So some of those innovative ideas are key to success from the retention side. And it also takes away from that Zoom burnout from the adult volunteer perspective well. Uh, there's nothing more invigorating than getting back uh, in small group environments and seeing your friends uh, and the people you work so well together uh, in person away from the computer screen. So continue to engage in those uh, types of environments, but use virtual meetings as just a supplement. Don't allow your virtual program and your virtual meeting to take over as your program delivery model uh, for scouting. There's ways that you can do that through uh, merit badge, uh, working with a counselor uh, or workshops that Daniel Webster Council offers. Um, but those are just supplemental aspects to the true uh, scouting program and the patrol uh, method. So for example, this fall, we're gonna be uh, hosting a council-wide uh, campery, virtual campery. Uh, if you participate in any of the virtual camperies that districts have offered in the past, uh, it hasn't been uh, sitting in front of the computer screen uh, Friday through Sunday to do activities, but it's more of a, a prolonged one week to two week program experience uh, that you can work together with your friends uh, and as a family to uh, complete challenges, uh, do activities together, uh, meet together uh, and perform and still have that scouting experience. And we're doing the same model with our venturing crews and our older youth and Scouts BSA troops uh, through our uh, EVOA moot experience. In the past, we had a weekend of high adventure and fun activities uh, for our older youth programs at Griswold Scout Reservation. Uh, we're unable to do that this year because of COVID-19, um, but we're still going to deliver in kind of a small cohort uh, challenge type experience. Uh, really take scouting uh, back to the in-person small group elements in the ways that we're able to do so with social distancing uh, and being safe. Um, 
So those are a key point, and I want to emphasize it. Um, we understand that recruitment this fall is going to be a challenge. Uh, we understand retention is going to be a challenge. But if we don't retain the current members and the volunteers that we have today, uh, 2021 will be a bigger challenge than uh, COVID-19 presented to scouting uh, in 2020. So it's important that um, while you think of new ideas and best practices that you've uh, identified in your own troop to keep your own youth engaged, um, to reach out to your, uh, your fellow friends and community and through your district executive uh, to share those best practices uh, through your roundtables that'll be uh, coming up. While some are going to be in a virtual environment, um, there's still great mechanisms to share uh, what you're doing so successfully in scouting. Uh, so please be sure, be there to share those experiences and to uh, have those available so other people can learn. And we'd love to talk to you about those uh, so we can showcase them and make them available uh, as best practices for others. And then of course, be uh, be prepared now for uh, virtual recruitment. If you want to have a virtual open house, um, there are uh, some strategies, a five-step process that'll be uh, listed on the website uh, tomorrow afternoon. You know, things like getting your online registration turned on, making sure your beascout.org pin is updated, all those best practices uh, to then get you prepared uh, to showcase some of what your program has to offer. But retention is key and quality program and engaging program is the way to retain those youth um, and not being afraid to socially distance uh, in small groups and stick to the core of what uh, Scouts BSA troop model is all about, which is the patrol style. Um, and I, we believe that that's gonna be a uh, key to success in keeping those youth and families, uh, assistant Scoutmasters, Scoutmasters, committee members engaged in uh, what scouting is all about and the fun uh, that there is to offer for that. As we go through, we're, we're coming to a wrap here. So please, if you have questions, drop them in the Q&A section. I'm going to take a quick moment uh, once we get through this to review any ones that were uh, sent to us in advance, make sure I captured them all. Uh, if we didn't get to one tonight, please uh, send Derek or I an email. If you want more follow-up or more brainstorming, we'd love to talk to you more about it. But uh, start preparing now for patrol and troop meetings. Um, not only patrol meetings for in-person, but also at-home programming. What are things that, um, you know, scouts could work on that you could use uh, a virtual environment to check the progress, uh, going through that and working in uh, merit badge advancements and those things as well. Uh, but don't just limit your, your programming to a virtual environment. There is some flexibility and some ability to have some small group uh, in-person activities. So please take advantage of those. You know, like Scoutbook as a way to uh, communicate and engage with uh, your current families on what's going on in the unit, uh, keep track of advancements, things that they've earned, whether they participated in the Granite Base Camp at Home program or some of our merit badge workshops uh, that have proven to be very successful. Uh, so utilize Scoutbook to the best of your ability and invite friends and family to join in. Uh, if you have a prospective scout or a friend that you want to share a little bit about what's going on in the troop, invite them to be part of your troop on Scoutbook. There is a guest profile, a 14-day trial. It gives them all the features in Scoutbook, take advantage of all uh, the stuff that's going on. And Derek mentioned about the DEN Chief program. Uh, just as you as a troop are struggling with identifying creative ways to keep your youth engaged, uh, it is proving extra challenging uh, to think about and innovate on ways that we can uh, keep five, six, seven-year-olds uh, engaged in a uh, non-traditional Cub Scout program uh, and focusing on DIN uh, methods, just as we are with patrols and troops uh, and using those resources. And once again, don't forget about the BSA Brand Center, number one spot uh, for all approved uh, resources for your unit to use uh, to market and customize for uh, public consumption. And actively promote the things that you're doing. You know, we have uh, units in Bow, New Hampshire, for example, that are creating uh, plexiglass dividers for the school to use to go in between the desk uh, when students return uh, in September for the classroom. So think of ways that you're developing and doing activities in your unit 
uh, and promote those out to the public in communities. Um, the more that we share the fun family-based adventures um, and character development, leadership for uh, youth members to become stronger, responsible adults, participating citizens in their community, uh, the more that people will think that scouting is still as strong and as vibrant as it ever has been. And uh, we really believe it is. We're just our best kept secret. So uh, utilize those resources, work with us. Uh, we'd love to help promote uh, all the great things that you're doing. Historic District, if you don't follow them on Facebook or engage with some of their volunteers on social media, uh, Historic District is probably uh, the champion of uh, online promotion of scouting, not only to their own volunteer unit base in their own scouting community and historic district, uh, but also to uh, outside communities to showcasing that even during COVID-19, families are getting together to do uh, character building, leadership development, achievement, advancement based activities in the outdoors, uh, taking advantage of New Hampshire's resources with hikes uh, and other great activities um, and really showcasing what scouting is all about. So check out Historic District, shameless plug for them tonight, uh, but uh, they're doing an excellent job on uh, showcasing what it's all about. And that's all volunteer unit leader driven. Uh, so they're a great example of how we can take what we're doing in a local patrol unit size uh, and really expanding that and promoting that. And the last question I've been leaving everybody this spring uh, and the summer has been, uh, if scouting is something that you truly believe in and you love, do you talk about it with your friends? Uh, and if you do talk about it with your friends and your friends decline uh, any interest or uh, excitement about getting their youth involved in scouting, um, you know, we need to identify why that is. And then how can we adapt our programs to do that? A part of it is just conversations and part of it is, is assumptions that are made uh, based on uh, popular media and even in the Boy Scouts own history of how we've uh, delivered our programs. Um, but now is the more important time than ever to adapt uh, to a changing society and what uh, our communities are looking for, for fun and safe programs uh, for their youth and scouting can deliver those. And um, we're very excited uh, to partner uh, and offer some uh, pretty innovative ways of, of delivering scouting through the things that we've experienced during COVID-19. That concludes tonight's uh, presentation. Um, if you have questions, please drop them uh, in the Q&A, we'll uh, keep it open for about two more minutes into eight o'clock. Uh, we'll conclude right at eight o'clock if we don't get any questions, but Derek and I uh, are happy to be here and answer all the questions you have uh, if you wanna go through those this evening. All right, so we're not seeing any questions and we're seeing uh, participates, uh, participants drop off tonight. So uh, thank you again for uh, joining us this evening. We will post this on the membership and marketing hub uh, tomorrow afternoon, Wednesday, uh, along with new updated resources. And anytime you have questions, please just reach out uh, to your district executive, uh, your district volunteer membership teams, or Derek and I, and we'll be happy to uh, assist you with anything you need. Uh, so with that, I hope everybody stays safe. Um, be mindful out there of down power lines through the storm. Uh, and thank you for joining us this evening. Everybody have a good night.